Right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. As we all know, Volvo estate cars are very practical and versatile. They fit into family life so perfectly, they almost become another family pet. But there's one problem. They're a bit, they're a bit geeky. They're an anorak with windscreen wipers. I don't think, and I could be wrong here, I don't think anybody's ever lusted after a Volvo estate car. You buy one, use it for 10 or 15 years, and then scrap it and buy another. It's just something that you buy to do a job with. It's basically a chest freezer. Well, with today's car, that's changed. Today I'm in this 2017 Volvo V90, which is quite possibly the most beautiful Volvo estate car ever made. I especially like it in silver. It looks very crisp and clean. I filmed with the S90 a couple of years ago, which is basically the saloon version of this, and I was impressed. One thing that didn't particularly wow me though was the exterior styling. That one was painted in a wishy-washy, bluey grey sort of colour, and it just looked a little bit plain. The V90 on the other hand, I think is gorgeous. It's such a striking design. From every angle, this looks the part. I love the LED lights at the front, which were designed to look like Thor's hammer. This model's the sporty R design model, so it's basically like an S-Line or an M Sport. You get bigger wheels and slightly different styling, and it really does look the business. I'm completely sold on the looks alone of this car, but that kind of does the rest of the car a disservice. It's so sophisticated, I almost feel as though my IQ improves every time I drive it. Something you'll notice immediately about the V90 though is its size. It's a big old bus that's at nearly five meters long. It's about the same size as a five series tour, and yet this feels bigger. The interior is very spacious. It's like being sat in a sports hall. You almost expect to hear an echo. There's loads of room up front, loads of headroom, loads of leg room, loads of elbow room, and it's the same in the back. You'd expect a Volvo estate car to have a big boot, wouldn't you? Well, the V90 doesn't disappoint. It offers nearly 560 litres of space with the seats up. What's more, the seats are very easy to fold down. And it isn't just the outside that looks like it's from the future. So does the inside. Yesterday I was driving around in a BMW 1 Series, an F20 model, and I was planning to do a video with it, but the interior was that drab. I just couldn't think of anything to say about it. This V90 is the exact opposite. I keep finding new things which impress me. I mean, look at the detail on these heat vents. They didn't need to do that, but I'm glad they did. I love the choice of materials they've used. Each one's different, but it doesn't look chaotic. It all works. Taking pride of place up front is this nine inch touchscreen, which for the first 10 or 15 minutes will leave you scratching your head. But after that, it is quite easy to figure out. You do still have some manual buttons here which control the volume and things like that, but most of it is controlled by this touchscreen. Handily, you've got this button down here which takes you back to the home screen, a bit like an old-fashioned iPhone, but it is all very easy to figure out. I keep finding new features which impress me. There really is no end to this car's gadgetry. That all sounds like it can be quite distracting, which it is, but if you find yourself taking your eyes off the wheel, the car will steer itself. How clever is that? Let me demonstrate. It has adaptive cruise control, so you simply set your speed, and even if something pulls out in front of you, it will brake for you as well. That's fairly standard these days. But this has something called pilot assist, which means it will actually steer for you. Watch this. Turn my pilot assist on. That's weird. Every few seconds it asks you to touch the steering wheel just to make sure you're not dead. What's interesting is that it still works in conditions like this, on a horrible wet day. Nothing to see here. This is probably the future, you know. If only you were allowed to use your phone or laptop while you were driving. I could make the most of this time now and reply to some emails. Not all models have this pilot assist option, so if you're looking for a used one, I'd definitely make sure it's got it. You might dismiss it as a novelty, but I think if I owned one of these, I'd use it all the time. There are limits to it. It'll keep you in your lane, but it won't, for example, go around a roundabout for you. So if you live in Hemel Hempstead, you'll still have to deal with that headache yourself. The S90 I filmed with a couple of years ago wasn't the sporty R design model. It was just an inscription, and the ride quality was very good. This is a little bit firmer. It's not bad though, and it certainly wouldn't deter me from buying one. Engine-wise, they offer a few petrols, a few diesels, and even a 400 horsepower plug-in hybrid. I've noticed here in Europe, most people went with a diesel which is a two litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine, but they're available in various states of tune. There's the D3 with 150 horsepower, the D4 with 190, or this D5 with 235 brake horsepower. The D3 feels a bit slow, the D4 is more than adequate, but this D5 feels properly quick. Watch this.
that's quick. I would say go with the D4 because that's more than adequate, but if you can stretch your budget to the D5, you won't be disappointed. Those extra 45 horses really make all the difference. The D4 didn't feel like a car that wanted to be rushed. This does. This almost eggs you on to go a bit quicker each time. The automatic gearbox is provided by a Japanese company called ASIN, so it ought to be very reliable. They've been working with Volvo for years. They're all in 8 speed, so when you sat on the motorway, you're doing minimal revs and maximum MPG. But, as with all 8 speed gearboxes, around town it is a little bit of a ditherer. You approach a roundabout, it takes a split second longer than you'd like for it to select a gear, and more often than not, it's wrong. All V90s are front wheel drive, unless you go for an all wheel drive model like this, in which case the power is split between all four wheels. Which, a bit like Audi's Quattro or BMW's X Drive, would make this really useful in the winter. If you want extra ground clearance, you can even buy a jacked up version of this called the Cross Country. That's a car that's been designed for the Arctic Circle, so it'll easily cope with the two inches of snow that you get in Sutton Coalfield. Because it's made for harsh climates, you get heated seats and a heated steering wheel. I could really get used to this car, it's a perfect all rounder. It really is a joy to be in this car, not because the drive is particularly thrilling, but it's a combination of everything. The style, the space, the gadgets, the stereo is superb. As a package, the V90 takes some beating. The seats are very comfortable, this one being the R design, they're trimmed with leather and Alcantara to stop you sliding around. Everything's just beautifully done. One little gripe that the seats are half manual rather than all electric, so you've got to adjust certain features manually, which I never like. I just think it feels cheap. Using this little scroll down here, you can change the drive modes Eco, Comfort, or Polestar Engineered. We've been in comfort all morning, so we'll try Polestar, see what difference that makes. Straight away, my revs have increased. I'm guessing the gearbox settings have changed too to cling onto gears longer. I'm not sure if that feels any quicker, to be honest, but the steering certainly feels heavier. It does feel more hunkered down. On a day like today, I'm quite glad I've got all-wheel drive. Handling-wise, it doesn't feel as sharp or precise as a BMW 5 Series, which is always the benchmark for this kind of thing. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. It definitely feels happier sat on the motorway, though, rather than being forced into these bends on these B roads. The other good thing with the V90 are the running costs are low. The road tax from 2017 onwards is a standard cost of £165 a year. And in terms of fuel economy, it all comes down to how you drive it. I've averaged 45 miles per gallon today. Volvo claim it'll do 60 on a motorway run. Now imagine it will if you stick to 60 miles an hour and you're very gentle with the accelerator. For a big estate car that weighs nearly two and a half tonnes, I don't think the 45 miles per gallon I've been getting is bad. The cheapest V90 here in the UK is around £16,000, but that's going to get you a front wheel drive, low spec model with around 120,000 miles on the clock. For one like this, this is a late 2017 R-Design Plus all-wheel drive D5 with 62,000 miles on the clock. That'll set you back around £22,000. It's an awful lot of car for the money, that. If you compare that to the equivalent E-Class or A6 or 5 Series, this looks like a bargain. It's also something of a left-field choice, which in my mind is all the more reason to have one. In terms of service and reliability, I'd find a good Volvo specialist and stick with them. Although what I would recommend is every couple of years, take it to a Volvo main dealer for a service because they do things like software updates, which are becoming more and more of an issue these days. There have been a couple of recalls on the V90, but it wouldn't put me off buying one. Overall, it feels like a car that's been screwed together to a high standard. I mean, to say this one's done 60,000 miles, there are no rattles, squeaks, creaks. It's all as solid as the day it left the factory. Well, I think that's about it. As I've said before, I think it's a really good all-rounder. It's good looking, luxurious, clever, comfortable, good on fuel, and easy to use. And most importantly, for the first time in a very long time, here's a Volvo estate car that you can buy, which doesn't make people think that you wear socks with sandals. So, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.